Hello and welcome back to Glen Muir High School as we prepare for Isa Da Costa Cup action and Central High up against William Nib High in this second leg of their second round fixture. The first leg ended at 0-0 and the teams are finally making their way out to the middle of the park and uh, really cool conditions. There was some a lot of rain actually a few minutes ago but uh, the field haven't taken a battering it seems as if it's uh, ready for this fixture and uh, thank you so much for joining our coverage here on the home of champions my name is donald Oliver. with me is chris taylor central against william nib what are your thoughts on this matchup very close matchup i think both teams felt like they should have won the encounter in the first match at irwin but yeah it will be the team that takes their chances here today that will determine the difference William Nib in their purple, white, and green, and Central High in their brown and white. Central High finalists last year and retained a, a couple of their players. This man, a big part of it as well, in Nathaniel Howe. Kels Anderson is the man in charge. Well, Anza Bennett and Andre Smith will assist him. Dorian Tummins is the fourth official. Captains are out there for the toss. And you saw Colonel Peart of William Nib, the, the skipper. And Nathaniel Howe of Central. As we take a look at the starting line for Central High, Ronnie Harriet is between the sticks. And Rick Gordon, Tyrese Thomas, Zidane Christie, and Alricach are the back four in the middle of the pot. Giovanna McDonald, Javon Campbell, and Nathaniel Howe has six goals and four assists to his name. And up top, James Gallimore, uh, James uh, Dyer, and Dylan Briscoe. 4 3 3 is what they will be playing in Central High. Yeah, James Dyer in that first leg got quite a few of the opportunities for Central High. Let's see if he can take them today. Four goals and four assists behind his name so far, the number 11. For William Nib High, they also have a 4 3 3 formation. Kemal Benjamin is between the sticks. Amari Christopher Reed will fly straight at left back today. Uh, Kemar Bennett, Orville Brown, and Joshua Walker uh, will uh, complete the back four in the middle of the park. Colonel Peart, Jaquan James, and Tion J. Bennett. Up top, we have J.R. Skyers. Coran Henriquez, the 15 year old that we showed you a little bit earlier with 10 goals and a couple of assists. And uh, Ciron Williams, who has five assists to his name. 4-3-3 is what they will play as well. Interesting lineup. Very deep lineup in terms of goal scoring and assists as well. And interesting to see Reed at left back. He already has five goals and three assists. Reed and look out for Bennett for the most of the creativity. Their number eight, Tion J. Bennett. Four goals and ten assists for his for him so far this season. The main distributor. So action about to get on the way here at Glenmuir High School as this is a second round fixture. The second leg of it, the first leg having ended nil all. Still all to play for here in the parish of Clarendon. And it's the away team who gets the proceedings on the way and immediately they go down that left hand side. Yeah, there's a bit of a struggle over on that far side and uh, may uh, cause some havoc for the players as they uh, try to uh, make a mark on the early proceedings here and uh, the throw as William Nib again trying to, to progress William Nib with a, a corner kick here Bennett to deliver this is ridiculous. The ball cannot even move within the 18 yard box freely. And needless to say, I think the mopping up service is needed to be a little bit more intense. Yeah. 
It was far from intense before, wasn't it? Jermaine Douglas is uh, the man in charge at uh, Central High. And of course, Dwight Jeremiah is at the helm at William Nib. As the ball played forward and central. Looking to recycle the possession and start again from the back. Gordon. Well, it's, it, it's going to be difficult for a number of reasons this game. The design of the William Nib outfit is just <laughs> it's quite ridiculous as well. But we move. Ball over the top. And uh, some difficulty here as the keeper is off his line and missed it completely. <laughs> Holds on at the second attempt. And uh, you can see that the comedy hour has be begun because of these conditions and we'll see that for some time. Again, the ball over the top, the flag stays down. William Nib trying to get service inside the area. And Central back in numbers. Reed with a shot from distance there. That didn't go all the way. And it's going to be a goal kick now to, or corner kick has been awarded actually, to William Nib. Central may have an opportunity to get out of their own half now. Not a bad first touch that was. Challenge coming in very late and he's going to be in some trouble possibly. No, the referee has kept the card in his pocket. Oh, the card is out. I, I figured it deserved yellow. And he goes into the referee's book, Kemar Bennett. In these conditions, it's it's imperative that you time the challenges right. And these can be considered reckless. So William Nib has a player in the referee's book. Here's a free kick, and how wayward from him. Of course, do you remember this is the second leg of this fixture? Central, they've won it in a dangerous place here, and an opportunity will come once again out wide. Ball dinked inside the area, turned inside by how a couple of players, well, three. You rarely see that happening. Head collision between three players who all require attention from off the bench. All three in some pain. Look at it here. Ooh. Bit of a sandwich as well. I actually think. I don't think Dai actually made 
head-to-head -head connection. It no, was probably didn't. an elbow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, two-legged tie, away goals rule in effect. The away team for this one, William Nib. So even though the first game ended nil all, if, for example, this game was to end one all, William Nib would go through on the away goals rule. So that will be an important fact for both these teams. I guess the aim from William Nib would be just definitely to get on the score sheet in this game and then take it from there. They've done a lot of the running so far, William Nib. Trying to make his way through there, Gallimore. And the whistle goes once more. And when you look at both these teams, Donald, they've generally been pretty fluent throughout the season in terms of goal scoring. Both average over three goals a game, 25 goals in eight matches for Central, and 32 goals in 10 matches for William Nip. So very surprising that they actually played to Anilo join <laughs> the first leg. And based on the conditions here, they might play to another Anilo draw and we get this decided on penalty shootout. William Nib again going forward, Enriquez looking for that touch away from his marker. Good hold of play by the 15 year old. This one is swung well across. Lovely delivery, but the ball will go over the top in the aftermath of the challenge, which came quickly to close down Skyers. Thomas goes long. Ball played forward. Can he get on the end of it, Briscoe? Can't. Central Eye looking to now apply the pressure with a bit of possession. Ball swung across. Gallimore couldn't quite get there.
Howe with a shot from distance that goes well over the top. Here's the ball that's played through. The defender was in the way, though. Good enough. Gallimore picks it up again. Loves it high, but just William Nib defenders there at the moment. That's a good challenge. And it's going to be still kept in play. Gallimore keeps it alive. Now it's with Howe. They really do have to stick to the basics in order to get successful passes going oh the fancy stuff can work at the moment ball given up and the shot from Henry gordon way off target One of the survivors from last season, Henrik Gordon. Quite a few of the instrumental players from their road to the final last year in the Costa Cup, no longer part of the squad. But Gordon, Dyer, and Howe are part of that starting lineup. Here they come, William Nib. Speculative effort from distance, spilled by the keeper. The shot had come in from Siron Williams, who is still looking to register his first goal this season. He does have five assists to his name. And here's Gallimore for Central. And challenge coming in again, it had to be timed to perfection. can tell this game could have had some quality about it if the conditions were just right. Yeah, lots of slipping and sliding and slide tackles coming in. These kind of conditions do facilitate that both teams still trying to settle down in the middle of the park. There's a foot race going on over on that far side. Oh, lovely stuff by Skyers. He's delivering side. It's built. A big chance here for William Nib. And again, couldn't settle in those conditions. They'll try again. And William sends this one inside. And Central trying to come away with the possession. I think what William Nib need to realize is in their defense line, there's no holding up of the ball. It's actually skipping through nicely off the surface. But in the, the central defensive box, much more of a concern. The ball not moving freely at all. And much more difficult to gauge. But you almost see uncertainty from some of the players when it's down the left-hand side of screen. Like they are expecting it to hold up, but it's not. It's actually shooting off properly, as you would expect with wet conditions. Obviously, the natural slope of the field taking it towards the right, the water. And that's where the majority of the water is. Williams will get there. Still applying the pressure, Williams. And enough pressure was applied. It's a throw into to William Nib. Well, that wasn't clear properly. Chance here almost went through.
Escobar Bennett on the turf. Doesn't need any help from off the bench. Oh, that's another wonderful challenge over on the far side. Again, he had to time it well, Alric Archer. Chris Taylor has seen the funny side of, of all this. Gallimore. Gallimore does well to move away from a couple of challenges. Still going, but it is going to be difficult to dribble on the surface. But again, he keeps it alive and he came in late with a challenge, it seems. Yep. After doing so much of the hard work. Gallimore collects his deep. Central, they have a player down. stamped on inadvertent I want to think it was anything malicious but could be quite painful right on the could have turned out uglier outside of the ankle yeah sky is the man who made the step Of course, 32 teams in this round, the second round of the De Costa Cup with 16 to advance. The winner of this fixture will go into group three of the quarterfinal round. And we actually have those, those possible teams as well, Donald. Uh, the winner of Dintil Technical and Horace Clark, Dintil currently lead after the first leg. This match, of course, the winner of Rossiz and Cristiana. Cristiana currently leading in that fixture. Many surprised by that first round result, but Cristiana doing very well. And I can tell you, they have a very talented center forward as well, Cristiana. Here is William Nib, And Williams tried to knock it into space because he figured that uh, Pionje Bennett was going to be making a run out wide. That didn't turn out to be the case. And so they gave up possession pretty easily. And uh, I felt he had time to collect that one, but he was sure. Benjamin, yep. Yeah, he thought it might have been a back pass, but he could have easily have taken that up. It wasn't purposely touched to him. But yeah, the first team, the, the fourth team, possible team in that is a winner of Edwin Allen. How sends this one inside and at the back post and it has to be cleared from outside the six yard box. Benjamin almost looks a little bit rattled there and went off his line to try and collect it. 
and he was nowhere near it. And that could have gone anywhere. Lucky to get away with that. That probably should have been finished. Was heading wide in any case. Looks as if it was Briscoe over yeah. on that far side. Maybe he was thrown off by the advancing keeper. Javon Campbell to take this corner kick. Wasn't well executed. And now they can counter. Lovely ball slipped through. And he didn't look up when he made that pass. It was wasted. Yeah, played that pass a little too early. Could have held it a bit more. Yeah, there was a, a sense of panic in that transitioning from William Nib. And this one is sent out wide. That's a delightful ball. Not a lot of support for him and then just just ran out of ideas, Dylan Briscoe. How? Was there a handled ball? <laughs> the referee said yes, along with about a hundred other people inside the venue. This could be a really interesting battle. Pretty close. No goal in this fixture. And we are in the second leg here. And free kick for William Nib as they try again. Referee said that he went down a little bit too easily. Now this is Siron Williams. Almost went through again to Enriquez. A couple of times we've seen him with a couple of uh, touches. He hasn't looked too bad, the youngster, but it's central through Gallimore across the face of goal and behind for a goal kick to William Nib. Haven't conceded many this season, William Nib. Just eight goals conceded in their 11 games so far. And they're under pressure there, luckily. Wide of the mark. And goalkeeper Benjamin not tested. Yeah, but conceding eight in 11 games, not bad by any means. Considering they've also scored 32 along the way. Well, here's William Nib. Oh, that's a lovely ball slipped through. A shot from distance, maybe a good one. It's spilled by the keeper again. And he holds on at the second attempt. Well, they won't be able to make much movement inside the area, but uh, the shot from distance could be a little bit more lethal if they're on target. It goes the other way, and Benjamin, yeah, he'll have no problems this time around. Nice strike from outside the area. Harriet did well on the second attempt. Luckily for him, no William need strikers close by to make the most of his spill. The central defense don't really look certain at the back. So taken quickly to Enriquez. And James trying to stretch it out wide and a miss kick there. And a late challenge there. And it's going to be a free kick to central high deep in their own half. This was a strike from some distance, tipping at the right moment, just before the keeper. Still, even though with the pace, should have been comfortable. But of course, with these wet conditions, you never know. Slippery. The ball will be hard to handle from a goalkeeper's perspective. In fact, shooting along the ground would make it even more difficult because then it would skip across and get all kind of awkward bounces. They'll have to be careful. D depending yeah. on how waterlogged it is inside the area, to yeah, be yeah. fair. Well, it might just stop, eh? Yes, it might just stop completely. Yeah, the braking system down this end is pretty good. It is. The handbrake all the way up, in fact. <laughs> 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 
William Nib looking to pass it around. And that was well done. Williams, though, ambitious effort. And it's gone into the swamp behind the goal. Mm. Which is the cricket field, by the way. Oh, is it? Yeah. Couldn't tell. Certainly rain, no play. They wouldn't even have bothered, bothered with the inspection, Christian. I no. can tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> Here they come again. Ball slipped through. The flag stays down. It's Enriquez. Enriquez, his shot is blocked. The follow up there. The keeper is off his line. Oh, that's brave goalkeeping. He had to do that. Ronnie Carriott. And apparently, it didn't even come off him last. Yeah, very good. Just wondered here if the shot should have been taken a little earlier. It was a new career with the initial one. Yes. Yeah. Ten goal man this season, the 15 year old. Decided to cut back, and once he did that, he brought the defenders into play, able to get in the block. And as you said, Harriet doing well. At it seems as if he favours the right foot, you know, well, more. Certainly. Yeah. But his initial position, and he still could have taken it with the right foot. How? Know. Heading towards the byline, yeah, foot had to be placed there. Colonel Peart. Uh, and no, he's not a colonel, that's his first name spelled with a K, with uh, a goal and two assists to his name. William Nibs, number six. One of the defenders inside the box now as the corner kick comes in, headed away, but wasn't too convincing. He has beaten the offside trap. Enriquez with the option of trying to cut inside and he wins it back luckily and he takes the shot and again it's wide of the mark. Skewed off the outside of the right boot. Unfortunate for him. One thing must be said about him, the number 17, very determined. back with us yeah it's running again it's it's not particularly good news especially we have if we have any ambition to play the the second game of the double header after this between Edwin Allen and McGraw high oh that's a wonderful ball played through and here's a shot that's taken <laughs> the dive was made <laughs> the dive was com <laughs> the dive was complete before the ball even got to him and uh, that has caused a few stitches inside the commentary box. Yeah, you can just imagine <laughs> what he's going through between the sticks, the uncertainty. I guess did the right thing, prepared early. First time I would have seen a keeper dive twice. He'd prepare in vain. Yeah. William Nib looking to make the transition in the attacking third. Ball coming inside. And almost turned out to be a tee up for his opponent, but it goes the other way. And again, conditions. Slippage. Do rather how William Nib are constructing their forward moves, though. Taking more touches, close up passes. Looking to alter, execute on the wide areas versus Central, who are just looking for that long pass, that big outlet pass to Ho and company. And Briscoe, not really utilizing the midfield as well. Just to remind you to download the Sportsmax app today from the Google Play or App Store. Of course, you can keep in touch with a lot of the schoolboy football action. And at times, it can be a little bit of a comedy hour. But you will be entertained, that's for sure. Download it today. Look at that, for example. Look at the first touch from Williams, and yeah, he's clearly offside, Enriquez. 
adjusting to the conditions better, William Nib. They have nothing to show for it yet. The rain has eased up just a little bit. Mm. It's still drizzling, but uh, it has eased for the time being, which will be good news for the officials and for the players as well. Yeah, both these teams looking to book, book a place in Group 3 of the quarterfinal round. It will be four teams of four in that round. The winner of this game the winner of the second game as well between Edwin Allen and McGrath will enter that group. Rossiz or Christiana and Dintil or Horace Clark. Those will be the four teams or four sets. Winners of those four matches. Gordon. Punting that one over the top. Here's Dyer. Lost it. Yeah, referee telling him to, to continue with the play. And the keeper comes out and holds on. Kamal Benjamin. Was pretty impressed with Benjamin last year. He was a, as we see one of their players down, made note of the fact that he had nine subjects to William Nib custodian, including eight ones. Kemal Benjamin, so of course he returns this year. Obviously those statistics would have been improved since the last time, but yeah, last year, Kemal Benjamin, with nine subjects and eight ones in particular. Yeah, I'd love to see the balance. Yeah. Between academics and sport, dedicated to both. Really good to see. That number six was well known last year. Tajay Cooper wore it. One of their standout players last season, William Nib, one of the best centre backs in all of schoolboy football. Love to get forward as well. Tajay Cooper was very influential in terms of William Nib moving through the competition. I think he scored around six goals last year, in fact, Tajay Cooper. Yeah. Didn't make the initial all the Costa squad, but there was no doubt that all and sundry thought that he should have been in there and was later added. Yeah, Peart adopting that number now. And he had a goal and an assist last term, did Colonel Peart, who wore the number eight last year and now take the mantle from Cooper. Cooper actually playing in the Jamaica Premier League right now. So making that transition to the senior level. Both sent inside the area and no problems for Benjamin. Well, initially, seen Mark Lewis there, their famous striker from the last two seasons, William Nib. He has transitioned to the Premier League as well. Was playing with the Chapleton Maroons before they were relegated. Flag went up, yep. Now acknowledged.
mentioned that Mark Lewis would have played for Chapter Maroons. Well, he's now playing his trade with Portman United and actually was on the park for them on Sunday at Drax Hall. Yeah. Against last year's champions, Mount Pleasant. Tajay Cooper, his teammate, is actually at Malines United. Well, William Nib again trying to make a move inside enemy territory. But good to see the work that Dwight Jeremiah is doing and, and seeing that his players are able to transition, have that quality to play at the higher level. Mark Lewis was playing from last season when he was still at the school. But their, their best export so far would ha have to be Krista J. Daly. Of course, yeah. In football, of course, yeah. yeah. In track and field, and we know the, the one and only. Program. Yeah, Usain Bolt, yeah. Not sure how much Dwight Jeremiah would have had to have done with that one, though. Oh, no. Little, <laughs> in fact. <laughs> he does help with the program, though, Usain Bolt. The football program. The sporting program yeah. overall at William Nib. Yeah. But, uh, he does love his football, doesn't he? And yeah. his cricket. But William Nib has found the knockout stages to be almost their ceiling, despite the fact that they wouldn't have advanced from the group on most, if not all, the occasions before Dwight Jeremiah came. And since he's been there, they had advanced every year. Yeah. Got to the quarter-final stage yeah. twice in a row. Mm -hmm. Maybe we'll not consider quite them able to go deeper just yet. Maybe we'll consider themselves to be a little bit uh, unfortunate to have to face the finalists now as they look to go ahead. Oh, that's a late challenge and the card should come out. And it does. As bright as ever. It's the brightest thing on the field at the moment. Not sure why he's, he looks a little bit surprised there. I think that's Zidane Christie. Yeah, it was Christie with the late challenge. Yeah, he had a card. Easy call, actually. As he brought down Skyers, who has looked dangerous so far. The steady drizzle continues. And I'm sure each drop continues to make an impact on this surface, which is already compromised. And now a free kick. And this could be problems for Ronnie Harriot in goal. Free kick to William Nib and Theon J. Bennett. The ball set up. Bennett deflected up off the wall and behind for a corner kick to William Nib. Corner kick sent in at the near post, not clear properly. Still inside the dangerous area for Central. And uh, here they come again now. Dyer, can he collect? He does. Trying to utilize his pace. Oh, does well, Dyer. Pulls it across the area. And uh, Gallimore couldn't quite gather. And the resulting effort is charged down. Archer was trying to go forward there, but nothing came from it. Throw in. Yeah, that wasn't correctly done, the throw.
So throw in to Central. Poor play through, and the flag stays down. A chance for William Nib, and there was uh, some pressure there as he tried to get the shot off. And there was a deflection in there as well, so William Nib will have another corner kick. Bennett. We'll be taking this corner kick. Lofted inside, headed away. Not too far out, the shot. Ricochet, another shot blocked. Fantastic defending that was at the back. I think it was actually how you know it may have been how with the couple of blocks there and here's the ball over the top and Dyer lovely ball inside and the last ditch channel challenge that had to be made central looking for the advantage again the ball inside but this time, William Nib with the easy control of proceedings. And now the ball over the top, looking for Enrique as the keeper comes out and guided by True Bounce. Oh, he has built it, manages to hold on. And really has had several heart in, moment, heart in mouth moments. Ronnie Carriott. As we see, central higher player, player down at the other end. But take a look at this. It seems as if it took forever for him to recover. And then what happened before, the header out didn't go too far. And then a couple of blocks there. I think how was the one in the way? Thomas may have blocked it first, then how? Somehow, the scoreline is still nil all. I couldn't get there. Not a lot of time remaining in this first half. Ball swept inside, looking for Enriquez. It's got through to Enriquez. Enriquez with a chance. William Nib still with the opportunity. Outside the box, here's the shot. Goal! William Nib! On the stroke of half time. confusion inside the box but in the end the shot was taken and what a hit that was and with the advantage heading into the second half William Nib with the timely strike from just outside the box yep the finish was emphatic. Bang! The last kick of the first half. And would you believe that Williams, who has had a wonderful first half, gets his first goal this season? And what a time for it to come. 1 0, William Nib.
Welcome back to Glenmuir High as we take a look at uh, what's going to be happening on the home of champions over the next couple of days. Olympiacos against West Ham. That's in the Europa League Thursday morning, 11.45 to make a time, 12.45 p.m. in the Eastern Caribbean. Then also on Thursday at 2 o'clock in the Europa League, Roma against Slavia Prague. 3 o'clock ECT. That's going to be on Sportsmax. On Sportsmax 2 on Thursday afternoon, we will see uh, Sparta Prague against uh, Rangers Thursday morning, in fact, 11.45 a.m. 12.45 in the Eastern Caribbean and uh, in the afternoon Thursday on Sportsmax 2 Liverpool against Toulouse 2 p.m. Jamaica time 3 p.m. in the Eastern Caribbean as we take a look at the Euro Europa Conference League on Thursday at 11.45 a.m. on Sportsmax Plus and that's on the app it's free on the app you can take a look at that action as well as uh, Dinamo Zagreb and uh, Victoria Pluzen on Sportsmax Plus, 2 p.m. Jamaica time, 3 p.m. in the Eastern Caribbean. William Nib with a 1-0 advantage over Central High. And they got that goal on the stroke of uh, halftime. And it was due to Siron Williams's wonderful strike. And boy, didn't the celebration go off. Well, the cleanest player has just entered the park and he's going to be a standout at least for the next few minutes with his bright white shorts. And the change made by Central with Alric Archer coming off. Or no, it, it's not Archer actually. We'll tell you the, the subs in just a little while. And as soon as we get information on substitutes, we will tell you. So, second half is on the way here. And the Central will get the proceedings on the way. They trail by a goal to nil. Roger Lewin has come on for Giovanna McDonald. Is that a bit of a surprise for you, Christela? I mean, Not I know really. that he, I know that he was quiet in that first half, but he's he's usually the player that has a lot of minutes under his belt. I'm wondering if it's also a bit of an injury from him if he's 100% fit, because he's one of the first names on the sheet. Jaheim Brown has also come on the park for William Nib. At the expense of James. As this one is collected by Harriet. Yeah, no surprise for me. I think Central High were looking to add some steel in the middle as well. Get more bodies within the middle of play. I think William Nib have done better in terms of working in terms of transition play and how they build their attacks as you can there, see here as the well ball coming inside again and oh they just managed to clear it you know and i think on a more certain half of the field here william Nib might just cause a lot more problem for a central defense line that hasn't looked so certain at times obviously their 18 yard box was hard to navigate now with this a much truer surface can william Nib make the most of it though Oh, 
ball sent to the edge of the box and William Nib trying to clear their lines again they are in an area that has proven to be difficult when you're defending and to be fair when you're attacking as well ball played through an opportunity here for Skyers Skyers trying to send that one inside but it, the pass was charged down An opportunity now for Central, but it went behind Gallimore, who was making a run over on that far side. Lewin. Skyers. Here they come again, William Nib. Oh, that's a, an obvious push. Not so obvious to the official, though. No whistle on the plate. He felt it was shoulder to shoulder. Powers had to come a lot deeper now with the number 10. Not sure that that works in Central's favor. Here's an opportunity for Central, but that was some good coverage there at the back. Update coming in from Lead Veer Technical by two goals to nil. Second half action. They won the first leg by four goals to one as well. So 6 1 an aggregate for Froome Tech. And they are heading towards the quarterfinal round. Ball spread out wide. That's a delightful ball, you know. Just one to aim for. Enriquez is looking for it and gets there. Misses a spectacular, though. Dyer now. The referee says play on, and they do. Central with a clearance. Ball over the top. They were trying to find Dyer. Now with William Nib scoring, of course, this game will not be decided from 12 yards. Yeah, or cannot be. Yeah. Away goal rule in effect, and obviously nil all was the scoreline after the first leg. Central needs to score twice at least. Yeah. But here's William Nib looking to get a second here. And that's why a lot of times persons talk about away goals almost being double. Because now a lot of work for Central to do. Just one goal and William Nib will be going through to the quarterfinal round yet again. Last year's beaten finally Central High. Good work by Howe, getting by a second challenge. And uh, the last challenge proved proving too much, according to the referee. And Colonel Peart has been reprimanded. Mm. Got the ball, but it was a challenge from behind. Maybe that's what the referee was seeing. Bit surprised that it was a yellow card there. Probably a foul should have been given, but... Yeah. It almost looked like he played the ball, though. Could have been clean. The referee thought that he got the player's leg first. Anyhow. Here's a dink to the edge of the box, and this header is guided wide of the mark. It's Roger Lewin. The substitute. Big match coming up as well. Edwin Allen against McGraw. McGraw leading in that head to head by, well, leading in that fixture by a goal to nil. Clarendon teams all around. 
most of them are in trouble in this two-way tie or in these two-way ties yeah 24 the costa cups out of 66 no parish has won more than the parish of clarendon and it must be said that the favorite for this season is from clarendon yeah clarendon college the defending champions big favorites to retain their title and of course yeah, expected to go far as well as glenmuir high too yeah but central would have been last year's beaten finalists and unless they improve their play they'll be heading out they have some defensive work to do and that's too close to the keeper who holds on Two of the Clarendon based teams could be heading out very technical. Certainly trailing 6 1 with not much time to go. They'll be heading out. And Central right now trail. They could be heading out as well. Both Clarendon and Glenmuir already through to the quarterfinal round. Technically, they still haven't qualified, but they do have a, a major advantage heading into the second leg. Yeah, major. Glenmuir are officially through. Clarendon do lead 8 0 on aggregate, and Garvey Maceo lead 7 0 on aggregate. Yeah, so those are pretty tight at the yeah. moment. <laughs> Central. Just on the edge of the box, trying to line up a shot here, and this could be an opportunity that. Well, he dragged it, didn't he? Not a power behind it from Javon Campbell, looking for his third goal this season. Not many times they have gotten inside the 18 yard area of William Nib Central. So they look at that as a positive. They need to push more players forward. At what point do they decide to gamble? Still a lot of time to go. Again, opting for that long pass. Yeah, they're trying to go into the attacking third as best as possible, and they're hoping that the awkward bounce in the attacking third, their attacking third, would create some sort of nuisance. Very hard to defend in these conditions, especially on this side of the pitch. Very hard to dribble too, so they should try and eliminate that out of their game. Well, that wasn't cleared well. And here's a shot that's fired wide of the mark again. It's from Jevon Campbell. Not a bad attempt. Caught the goalkeeper by surprise as well. Almost had Benjamin wrong footed. See, he looked as if he was going to his right at first, Benjamin. But he did have that near post covered. Mm. Finally, the sun is peeking out. Yeah. It's usually a good drying agent. I'll let it stay. William, they're not as patient as they were in the first half. And they have the area of the field that would suit their playing style going forward, but they haven't replicated the passing game in the second half so far. They're pretty much doing what Central High are doing in going the route in going route one. Here is route one. Lovely first touch from Briscoe. The second touch wasn't the best though. Wins it back. Yeah, it's got to be a foul though. Lots of tugs there from the central high perspective. 
Yeah, and I think that's what the argument is now from Reed. He thought he was being tugged, and I think he's right. Clear arms around him, holding him back. And there needed to have been a call there. More of the possession for Central High in this second half, so from their perspective, that's good for them. And that's why it doesn't seem as if William Nib is as smooth. Well, he doesn't look too smooth at the moment, Kemal Benjamin. Crowd building all the time here at Glenmuir High. Lots to ponder from Jermaine Douglas and company. Douglas on the right. So, Freaky coming up for Central High. Oh dear. Well, that wasn't good enough from Archer. Oh, that's lovely interplay, and that's a wonderful shot, and the save had to be made, and he gathers at the second attempt the on the duress. I think it was Jaheim Brown who took the shot from distance, the substitute. As, uh, just to remind you to download the Sportsmax app today from the Google Play or the App Store to keep abreast of a lot of sporting action from all around the world, including in Jamaica and Trinidad and Tobago at the high school football level. We're talking about the ISA competitions in Jamaica. We're talking about the SSFL in Trinidad and Tobago. And in particular in Jamaica, you can watch schoolboy football free on the app when you tune into Sportsmax Plus easy to download and to navigate as well so download it today Again, the ball over the top. Opportunity here for William Nib. And the opportunity gone. Amara Christopher Reed. Skyers. Ball has reached over that far side. Brown. Williams. Back to Brown. Walker now. Reed. Reed goes for the long option. Enriquez gives chase. He's been doing so much running this afternoon. Enriquez couldn't keep that one in play. And goes into the, the river behind the line for his troubles. He's feeling it, the 15-year-old. 
and especially with the extra wet conditions and it being heavy will take a further toll on the legs. For a lot of this half, half has had to be operating by himself. Oh, that's a lovely touch, but good defending. The backtracking was really good from the, the captain, Colonel Peart. Yeah, Dwight Jeremiah will know very well. One nil, probably not good enough. I mean, it would be good after 90 minutes, but right now he would want a second goal just to take the game away from Central. Yeah, insurance as the ball comes in side the area and going for the spectacular is wide of the mark. To Gordon. try to try and guide it goalwards with Gordon. Central doing better in the second half, building the play a lot better. Mm -hmm. They still want more though, they want more players committed forward. It's still an uncertain era inside the 18 yard box here of William Nib in terms of water retention. And they would love to make more use of it, more shots needed on target. To test Benjamin. would be a big disappointment for the parish and for Jermaine Douglas and the school if they were to fall at this stage considering they got to the final last year it wasn't the most convincing route that they took last year to the final mind you did lose somewhat four games along yeah. the way, but they were a very resilient team and that is why William Nib won't take this lead for granted exactly they have come back many a times in fact last season they they thought they were heading out in the quarterfinal round only to win their final game here's the ball that it's coming inside the area, headed away. And well, that was tame, wasn't it? But they still have the possession. Barely. Well, they've lost it now. I think both teams being careless with the ball at the moment. There's another example. The follow through Look was pretty that. dangerous there. The referee will now stop the play because that is in some pain there it was a crunching challenge and yeah he got the ball but i think he took part of this kid's soul as well with the challenge soul eh look at this looks like a calf yeah oh that's a poor challenge you know that should be in the book that's a poor challenge the follow through now you agree with me Ah, that is very high. That is very high. You've seen tackles like that being shown the red card as well. It was a bit wild to start with, and yes, he did play the ball, but I mean, it seems like the ball was the least of what he touched. That could be, you know, I'm, I'm glad to see him up and walking. Yeah. Me too. Yeah. That was very high. It was actually as high as the knee. So. Central in an advanced position here. Trying to turn on the touch line. Enriquez lost it and now here's Dyer or rather that was Briscoe with the effort Lots of shouts, mine, mine, mine. I'm sure Dwight Jeremiah will tell him that everybody is mine. You need to actually call a name to be clear. He'll be happy with the 1-0 advantage, Dwight Jeremiah, but he knows it's not over. 
This central team never gives up. Ball played along the line. Dyer gives chase. Challenge is a really good one. Briscoe has it. Trying to turn Howe right into the traffic. Central looking for a goal back. And the keeper has control. It's not a bad kick, you know. In the NFL, they would have called that a, a perfect punt return. Yeah. Just into that era that you force Central to do something, eventually shadowed out for a goal kick, but it does free the pressure. They've had so much of the possession. And uh, Dyer has been doing a lot of running himself. And I think William Nib will be happy with that. They have covered it very well. Forced Dyer to put that out for a goal kick as well. They've concentrated a lot of their attacks down this right side central in this second half with Dyer, who will feel based on the first leg that he owes his central team a goal or two. Did get quite a few chances in that first leg, didn't convert. Oh, that's a foul from Howe. It was cynical. Bennett sending it long, headed into touch. William Nib once more. Ball played out wide. Oh, that's lovely play to the byline, but good recovery here by Alric Archer. Here's the ball coming inside the box. Not clear properly. Here's a shot from distance. That's wide. They center like these long-range hits. Yeah, the centre-back having his say. They are looking for his third goal, Orville Brown. Well not sure that was the best play coming in on that occasion from Brown conceding a throw when he didn't need to probably still thinking about the shot kick to central Javon Campbell behind it looking to be the provider here with seven of central's players on the edge of the box
all jostling for prime real estate. Looking for the equalizer and to get back into this contest. There's the delivery. That's a good ball inside. The keeper getting a vital hand and then it's hacked out of the area. Good teamwork by William Nib on that occasion. That was a nice delivery into the area, into a telling position. Did have quite a bit of hang on it, which is why Benjamin was able to get there. Wasn't the best punch, but it did enough. Just a nice layoff from the keeper. No, oh, yeah. Or a nice set if it was volleyball. It was, so yes. Not afraid to take the shots from distance. Central high. And uh, it's going to go for a throw in. by Jeremiah not happy with the use of the ball in the second half and you can understand William Nib have been under more pressure in this half not able to own the midfield and at times giving away up giving away the ball a bit too much doesn't want them to be happy with us this one goal advantage central and improved display but it still must be said not creating enough shooting opportunities in good areas. Central trying to get on with it. Again, it's just a long pass to O'Donnell. How was coming back from an offside position? Frome now leading by three goals to nil against Ver Technical. 7 1 on aggregate. In the other match going on in the Da Costa Cup. Dyer goes over the top. And no issues there for the William Nib back line. Nicely done in playing through. Peart trying to thread that one through the middle. William Nib, they have a throw over on the far side. German Douglas looking to go to his bench again. He needs more. He needs goals. And one alone won't do. Remember the away goals rule. And William Nib are the away team now. Nil all it was in the first fixture. It's a central high need two goals at least to have any chance of going through to the next round. Devon Shaw is now on the park for Central. Brown sends it out wide. Ball deflected inside and just over the head of Enriquez and gathered by Harriet. Striding forward is Dyer. Asking a lot 
from Shaw. Shaw does well to keep it in play. Let's take a look at the sports max at moment and there's only one moment that you can think of right and it's the difference in this match so much difficulty to work in the ball inside the penalty area but then when he came back in three two one bang wonderful hit and that was his first goal this season Siron Williams along with his five assists Chris Taylor and that is our sports max app moment of the game courtesy of the sports max app yeah, excellent strike it was. And the difference maker. What a finish. And no chance for Harriet between the sticks. Might very well be the winner. Just over 10 minutes to go. Will it be three seasons in a row for William Nib? That's the possible matchups in Group 3. Well, possible teams to go through. Tintil currently leading 3 0 on aggregate against Horace Clark. William Nibbles, we see here, leading a goal to nil over Central. Rossi's trail Cristiano by three goals to nil. And Edwin Allen trail McGrath by a goal to nil. That's the second match coming up here. Four of those teams will be in Group 3 of the quarterfinal round of the Da Costa Cup. does make for interesting reading as we take a look at all the possibilities that may arise and even the actual teams in the group ball coming through and here's a substitute trying to line up a shot which took a deflection. And it's eventually put into touch for a throw in. And that was Devon Shaw's first attempt. Yep, Shaw was lining up that far post. Almost got through. Central, they need two goals to go through. It's a big away goal that William Nib has in its possession. Top. It's a good ball, you know. Enriquez struggling to make. Oh, that's that was a very strong challenge. Shaw picks it up for Central. Ball steady at the back as Walker picked it up. Yeah, Donald, I think all along I was referring to the next round as a quarter-final round, but it's actually a round of 16. 
and not the quarterfinal round. So round of 32, round of 16, then the quarterfinal round. So from that group three that we saw, it's four groups of four teams, top two to go through from each zone to a quarterfinal round, which will then be two zones of eight. This is group one, currently set up. Clarendon lead the cartridge by eight goals to nil on aggregate at the moment. It's close between Cornwall and Black River. Cornwall with the advantage, is it two goals to one in that fixture? Stets are already through, St. Elizabeth Technical, three nil on aggregate, and Belair and Mile Gully to finish off the battle. One of those to go through. Possibility well. that three big former champions could be in that group as we take a look at the possibilities in group two. BB Cook, they've already confirmed their spot. Happy Grove and Ocherius fighting for one spot. Manchester and Monroe also there. Manchester with the advantage, mm -hmm. Ocherius with the advantage, and Taki Taki with the advantage over. No, Not it's. it's, 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 it's so Happy Grove with the advantage over Ocherius by two goals to one, and it's all squared between Cedric, Titus, and Taki. That Manchester Monroe battle to very close, one nil. Manchester lead. Dyer collecting that one deep again, lost this one inside the area. Header away. The William Nib backline holding firm. Like exact like what Orville Brown and Kemar Bennett have done so far. But Central launching another one here. And uh, they are appealing for a, a handled ball. But just a corner kick has been awarded. Sliding challenge yet again coming in. Substitute James getting a warning from his goalkeeper Benjamin. There's a corner kick, not a bad delivery, headed away. Yeah, Enriquez is trying to get by his marker. Oh, he has, he has run about 10 kilometers, I think, at least. What a hard little runner their striker is, Coran Enriquez. Ten goals and a couple of assists to his name this season. Work rate, very good. Mm -hmm. And here's the other group. group Mannings four. and Port Antonio. Port Antonio lead Mannings in yep. that fixture. Gavi Maceo, peak front runners against St. Mary High. I think seven goals to nil. I St. Mary would have to pull off a miracle to get to advance. Glenn Muir already through. And from Frome Technical. Are on the verge. Yeah, are leading 7 1 and aggregate against Veer Technical. That one deep in second half action in the second fixture. Manning's Port Antonio, though, that's. Big result for Port Antonio. What a big thing that would be for the parish as well. Yeah. Portland Parish has never won the Costa Cup. In fact, looking at these matchups. There's been really good representation from Manchester, the parish. We spoke about the need for Manchester to do a lot better and how the teams have been catching up, especially Belair and company. Christiana are leading in their fixture. Yeah. They're from Manchester. Manchester lead Monroe by a goal to nil, so they are in the advantage. They have been the standard bearers for yes. the parish of Manchester. Manchester Belair High. will play mile goalie, so you're assured of a Manchester representative there mm -hmm. in the round of 16. So that's possibly three teams out of the parish of Manchester making it through. Through to the round of 16. Yeah, that might be the first in quite some while. Still a far way to go into the Costa Cup though. Yeah, but these parishes that don't achieve much will every little thing they will look at and say, you know, we, we've done better this year. Yeah. Yes, we haven't lifted a trophy, but we're improving. Bennett does well. Enriquez was eclipsed. Referee tells him to get up quickly. Shaw trying to get there. And... Uh, Last touch, I believe, came off the William Lib defender. So 
So let's see what happened here with Shaw. Wow. Those two feet were very high, two-footed tackle. And high as well, it was, <laughs> it was caught by the William Nip player in the end. Held on to the boot, but you got to be careful with those tackles. I think that was a, a change that was signaled, Enriquez. And that's something that referee Anderson needs to stamp out as well. I think he's too tolerant of some of these two footed tackles that are high as well. Especially with these conditions. Yeah. I think I think the mindset is to be a little bit more lenient with challenges which may look out of control. But I think that's when you have to be a little bit more firm. Correct. Exactly. Can't be encouraging two footed challenges and certainly not at that height. So Enriquez, he's, he's run several miles here and he's going to be taken out. The 15 year old striker. And they're going to be hoping that he fully recovers and is ready for the uh, round of 16 should they advance. Jimmy Powell comes on in his stead. Has one goal and one assist to his name. Tackle from behind from Howe, and he has something to say to the official as well. He needs to be careful, Howe. Five minutes of stoppages will be played. They require two goals in stoppage time here. Defending, well, not defending champions, but finalists last season. Central High, and they could be heading out a bit early for them in this season. Credit to William Nib, they have been very consistent over the last five years. It would be their third quarter final stop in a row. I think the goal scorer for William Nib has to be up there based on the type of game that he has had, especially in that first half. Siren Williams did a lot of work for William Nib along the right hand side. And what a goal it would be as a winner if it turns out to be. Yeah, Howe was on the edge for some time now and goes into the book. It would be fitting for William Nibbs, number 16, to send his team through to the round of 16. Oh yeah, Howe with the yellow card. Frustration building. Let's just see exactly what happened here. Good work by the goalkeeper. I don't think, I think yeah. he just ran into him actually. Had a right to go for the ball and then, yeah, the follow through caught the keeper. Yeah, that, nothing that more didn't than look a malicious. No, nothing more than a yellow there. Sure, goalkeeper Benjamin will try and milk as much of these five minutes as he can. Yeah, Williams might just be tipping it for you, Donald. I certainly understand that. I want to also mention, though, that Kimar Bennett, their number 20, has done very well, as well as Colonel Peart, yeah. their captain and number six. I think both of those gentlemen, the defensive midfielder and Captain Peart, but their, cent their centre-back, Kimar Bennett, their number 20. And Orville been Brown as well, I, I Yeah, I both think. Brown yep. and they have been very good. I mean, they do say the hardest thing to do in football is to score. And that goal and from Williams. Really, and it was really hard yeah, to score in that first half. And that goal from Williams, spectacular, and might just be the difference. But don't underestimate the performance of the, of the two centre-backs and their defensive midfielder and captain. Some really telling challenges from both Brown and Bennett. But we only have to choose one. Hmm. 
Well, Central with another attack. What I'll say is this. The defenders did enough for this game to go to penalties. Williams did enough for this game to be in favor of William Nib. No, I certainly go with you on that, Donald, certainly. And the, the, the way in which he scored as well, something out of nothing. But both teams have been pretty solid defensively. They have kept out the opponents for the most part. Oh, he's glad that he was really late. <laughs> yeah, getting much safer for William Nib. Just about 30 seconds to go. And they know that Central High I've got to score two goals. Yeah, another quarter, another round of 16 yes. appearance for them now, for William Nib. They were the ones with the long travel. Rome have defeated their technical by four goals to nil in their second leg. 8 1 on aggregate, and they're through to the round of 16 from. So, two Clarendon teams will be out this afternoon. Fair technical and central on their way out as well. The defend the, the last is written finalists. Yeah. I was getting there. Dara again loses out. That's the end of the match. Last year's finalists have been defeated. And William Nib continue on their path to even greater success. It's a trend that uh, they hope to continue to build on William Nib as they are through to the round of 16 of the Dacosta Cup. Again, 1-0 over Central High. Simon Williams, the difference maker. And Central, who were in the grand finale last year, they are now exiting the Dacosta Cup at the second round stage. They are disappointed. And some of them are in their last year of the Dakota Cup, not the way that they wanted to end their schoolboy football career. But as for William Nib, they would hope to continue their success and go as far as possible in the Dakota Cup full time. Central High nil, William Nib one. Referee Anderson, the man in charge. William Nib in their purple and white, driving forward, very soggy conditions, especially in the first half. And the ball stopping, luckily for goalkeeper Harriet, who could execute the save, keeping it away from Henriquez, the impressive number, 50, the impressive 15 year old. This man with a strike early, Williams, and he had better yet to come. Central high, getting a few balls into the air. That finish should have been better. Goalkeeper Harriet committing, Benjamin, sorry, committing. And luckily for him, the shot was off target. Central getting into the area on a rare occasion. And Gallimore with the strike, which was wide. And then another strike from outside here. Lots of shots outside the 18 from both teams. That time equal to the task. An occasion for Henriquez to get inside the area. Decided to cut back. Not sure if that was the right option. And allowed the central defense to get back and defend. 
William Nib had the better of the first half. This was another strike which barely made it to goalkeeper Harriet. And then the moment that changed it. One minute into stoppage time in the first half. Good work by Henriquez. And look at this from Williams. A bit fortuitous how the ball got to him, Williams. But look at that strike. Great technique, was slipping as well, which is even more impressive. Put his instep through it, locked the ankle, and into the roof of the net. Goalkeeper Harriet, no chance. And Williams with his first of the season, William Nib, 1-0 to the good. He knew the importance of that into the second half. Now Central, a better performance in the second half. That was Campbell getting forward, but his strike was into the side netting. William Nib, again, those strikes from outside the area. Harriet doing enough. And Central, even though they got more balls into the 18 yard area, there's another example. Just not enough strikes to test goalkeeper Benjamin. This another attempt from the substitute deflected. And William able, able to clear a strong defensive effort. And Williams with a blinder. So William Nib through to yet another round of 16 into the Costa Cup. Dwight Jeremiah getting results. Five shots on target from 15 attempts for William Nib. Just the one shot on target from 12 for last year's beaten finalist. There were four yellow cards shown, two each. Five corners for William Nib. They enjoyed majority of the possession and all the goals here at Glenmuir High. William Nib through to the round of 16 with their 1-0 win. Let's hear from our water man of the match. None other than the goal scorer, Mr. Williams, Seron Williams. And here we have our water man of the match. He is no other than Siran Williams, the goal scorer for today. Congratulations. Siran, today the rain had affected the field a bit, but you managed to score a goal in the first half. How was it for you? It was a very good feeling because my team needed the goal to, to advance to this, to this round of 16. Well, you are in the round of 16, as you said again. How does it feel for you and your team? My team, me and my team, we feel very joyful, great. I think we can push on beyond this competition. You did have a lot of support when you scored a goal today. People were sliding and tripping, celebrating just like you and your teammates. How does that feel to know that people are supporting you? It gives me a joy because when you are pushing on to the competition, we're going to need the support. We're going to need a lot of support. Well, you did well. Congratulations and all the best for the rest of the season. Thank you very much. Now we welcome the coach of Central High. Coach, not the result you'd have wanted today, but your boys managed to put up a fight. What do you think went wrong? Well, to be honest, we never deserved to win this game, but we should have won in St. James. Well, rain or shine, the show must go on. Was the water retention on the field a big issue for your boys? Come yeah, on, especially in the first half. Um, we just never adjusted to the con underfoot condition. In the second half, I think we did a bit better, but just couldn't find the final product. Well, we must talk about progression and going forward as your season comes to an end. How will you continue to develop these young men to help advance your program? Well, there's a lot um, to think about now. So I'm not thinking about developing and moving forward at the moment. I'm just going to do some reflection and then decisions will be made. Okay, thank you, Coach. No. Now welcome the head coach of William Nib. Coach, earlier today we spoke about, well, you told me about how confident you were in your training and you came out victorious today, assess the performance of your team. Um, it was a great performance. I must say that my, my goal scorer man of the match today, he was my second choice goalkeeper last year. Such is the depth of my squad, I don't have a lot. My bench is consists of like 13, 12 year, old, year olds. So for me today, they fought. And, and, and though quality wasn't possible because of the underfooting, I just felt that when it comes down to determination and effort today, I can't fault them on it. That's off. 
Now we have to talk about the weather. The conditions in the first half made it a bit miserable for your team. By any chance, did your boys have any complaints in the halftime? Not much. You know, they won the toss and we would have picked the half that we, that we got because we felt it was better to build up play and then make the switch. And it was going to be difficult for defenders and felt that second half it would run off a bit. It worked perfectly for us. So I think that also helped. But the under 14 was always going to be difficult. Well, on a brighter note, you have another round of 16 appearance and you may face tougher opponents in the future. How will you be able to get your boys ready for those appearances? These boys, I'll tell you what, I think this team, what it has over last year is that they have a grit and a fight, a will and a determination to tackle and some difficulty. This is the fourth time this season they've faced with a match that could end their season and they have come to the fore and deliver. I have no doubt that they'll do it again whenever faced. Well, congratulations, coach, and all the best. Thank you. Yeah, so William Nib are through to the round of 16 yet again. Dwight Jeremiah has got it done. They defeat last year's beaten final Central High by a goal to nil. The Costa Cup second round action is heating up here at the Glenmuir High School. Bye for now. Yo, Issa. High school boy football look this season. People them ready, you know. All right then, pick up. Manning Cup, only for your shield, you make me link up. We watch the champions cup, Ben Francis, Baka Cup, which team are in the championship this season. Yo, Issa, Baba Banda, if a school, I go finish the league and beat now. Which youth, I go collect the golden boat and be the favorite for the people. Yo, Issa, me see fans are roll out all boat, be a flag for a vehicle. Looking at the crowd, bus loan, I support us from school and community too. People, nothing at the stand, some are the superior, they must have a watch it on TV too. Country and turn your night be one reason. Isa, schoolboy football, good come, look one, look all. Which team are the best and I go better than the best and if I hear team beat your chest. Isa, schoolboy football, that team could rise and that team could fall. But they never will know.